I'm just okay. here. All board members being present with the staff I'm here for indicating they're ready to proceed. I will call the order of the uh, regular business meeting for Monday, December 8th, 2014, with the Board of Commissioners. Ask for a moment of silence. that we accept the uh, agenda with the modification taking FYI item number one and placing it as old business number five. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. The agenda of that modification is approved. That's interesting sound. I thought it was back in Catholic Church that <laughs> time. Okay, uh, next item is uh, citizen matters. We have two citizens who have signed up to speak. First is Mr. John Alderman and then uh, Diana Hales. Mr. Alderman, before you begin, uh, you indicated here your subject matter is consultants. You know, I'd ask you to, if your uh, intent is to discuss consultants that relate to Chatham Park, that would not be allowed by our procedural rules. So, okay. thank you. This is an open letter to Mr. Grusbeck. I own a small, highly qualified local environmental consulting firm wishing to do business with Pittsburgh. We specialize in completing natural resources investigations, such as stream and wetland delineations, endangered species surveys, plant and animal inventories, <coughs> environmental assessments, biological assessments, 
environmental impact statements and applications to state and federal agencies for permits, certifications, and authorizations. Our clients include some of the largest public agencies and private firms. That's global. We do no engineering, architectural, or land surveying, we'll call it EELS, work. As you know, according to the Federal Brooks Act and North Carolina State Mini Brooks Act, EELS contracts require a qualifications-based selection process without competitive bidding on projects. Natural resources investigations performed by Alderman Environmental Services Incorporated are not addressed by these acts. Therefore, in all future selections of contractors needed for natural resources investigations or for assistance in developing documentations needed to acquire state or federal environmental impact authorizations, I request that Pittsburgh require competitive bids for this work. This is America, and I've got plenty to prove that I'm American. It is inappropriate to include this work in contracts to EELS firms that farm this work out without competition to their hand-selected environmental firms. Local governments facilitating such, such authorizations or associations not addressed by qualifications-based legislation have no legal grounds of support. In the future, Pittsburgh needs to separate various project contracts into two categories, qualifications-based essentially based upon the Brooks Act and the State Mining Brooks Act, and competitive bid, which is what I'm after. I want to compete for work. I want to work. By doing so, you'll be supporting local small businesses, and you should receive quality products at reduced cost to taxpayers, which we're all after that. Thank you very much. Next speaker is uh, newly elected Commissioner uh, Barney Hales, County Commissioner. Welcome. Hello, and uh, good evening to uh, uh, Pittsburgh Town Commission. Uh, yes, I am uh, Diana Hales, and I am uh, was sworn in a week ago, so uh, this is an opportunity to just uh, come before you as a citizen, primarily, of Chatham County and uh, a, a, a newly elected official, but I'm speaking for myself. And I am uh, speaking here tonight because I know that as we are starting our journey in, uh, after this election, uh, what we must have and what I know you are all for is uh, County town cooperation, and I am just here to state my desire f to work very closely with the boards of uh, all the towns, Siler City, uh, Pittsburgh, and Goldston. Uh, because as looking and as I look back at uh, my involvement in government over 20 some years, and that's been state government um, primarily is that the issues that are facing Chatham and Pittsburgh are in fact very critical issues that everybody is facing right now. Uh, right now um, I've become a member of uh, the uh, TARPO and I guess we'll have a meeting this week or next week uh, about uh, regional planning and I also noticed on your agenda you've got the uh, Lake Jordan partnership which of course the county is in also and I'm, those are areas that I have a particularly a strong interest in uh, with an environmental background and concern over water and wastewater as we move forward uh, in a high growth area now and uh, how we are going to try to invest in those uh, infrastructures. I'm also very interested in your work and our work on the county and in um, uh, Siler City on um, doing the best we can to protect our water resources. We're not only looking at water we are going to use, we are looking at the health of our, our, our entire ecosystem and community here. One of the things this particular board of commissioners in Chatham County is dedicated to doing is resurrecting the Environmental Review Board. 
uh, in the past, the Environmental Review Board uh, was part of the planning process and uh, was essential in the subdivision process. Uh, that had changed over the last few years, but we are looking at how that will work uh, and uh, getting the citizen and the environmental input on our planning. So I just uh, wanted to say thank you and I'm glad to be here and I hope to see many of you and all of you in uh, various uh, formats and at various meetings as we move forward, uh, as we move forward as a county and certainly as Pittsburgh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, I'll move this to uh, the kind of the old business, which is presentation of our audit for fiscal year 2013 14. He is with Reeve, uh, Reason Associates. They were the external auditing firm that conducted our audit for fiscal year 2014. <coughs> you did receive in your packets a draft of the financial statements, and um, Jay will go through that in a little bit more detail, but you do have the information that's readily available, and he will be referring to that, some of the data within your packets. So with further, without further ado, I'll turn things over to Jay from Reeves and Associates. Good evening. Uh, like Nancy said, my name is Jay Sharp. I'm a senior audit manager for the Raleigh Office of Reeves and Associates. Uh, thank you for having me out here tonight. Uh, I have a brief presentation to go over the audit and how the audit went this year. Uh, feel free to interrupt me with any questions. We can wait until the end of the presentation. Um, first of all, I want to discuss kind of some schematics of the audit. The uh, leadership team this year was the same as last year. Uh, Len Reeves, the managing partner of the firm, served as the uh, partner in charge of the audit. And I served as the senior auditor in charge of the audit. I kind of did all the groundwork. I was out here with you. two other staff during October uh, doing the audit for the town. Uh, the timeline for the audit, uh, back in April, if you remember, you approved the contract for the audit and it was submitted to the LGC and approved all right, during that time frame. Uh, this is the second year we've done the audit for the town and we had preliminary they tried to get out here to do some preliminary work in the springtime. Of course, you lost your finance officer back in April, so we were unable to do that this year. Uh, we did come out uh, during the end of October and did field work for the audit um, and completed that uh, during that first that week, that last week in October. Uh, the financial statements were prepared in November and they were submitted on November 26th, uh, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, um, about a week earlier than last year and before the LGC's deadline. Uh, LGC is com uh, currently reviewing those and the uh, audit will be finalized once we receive approval from the LGC for the financial statements. Uh, a couple things I want to go over, I'll uh, kind of just go hand in hand is the objectives of the audit uh, and the results of the audit. Uh, the main objective of the audit is for us as an audit firm, the reason you hire us is to give an opinion on the financial statements uh, for the town. And you can find this opinion on pages 1 and 2 of the financial statements. Um, as last year, you received what we call an unmodified opinion, the best possible opinion you can receive on the financial statements. If there's any major problems with the town, this would be the first place you'd see it. But as I said, it's unmodified, um, unmodified opinion. Uh, there are no extra wording, standard wording uh, for the opinion letter this year uh, for the audit. So that's the good news. The uh, second major objective of the audit is to look at the internal controls as it relates to financial reporting. Um, we did do so, and as last year, there was one significant deficiency noted, uh, segregation of duties. We were hoping to remove that this year, but because of the loss of the finance officer, we were unable to do that. Uh, we've discussed the matters with Nancy, and hopefully next year we'll be able to remove that finding uh, from the financial statements. But that is one significant deficiency you have on the financial statements this year, is segregation of duties. Uh, the last objective of the audit is to kind of look at the operations and notice if there's anything that can be done better um, with the operations of the town financially. 
Uh, you should have a letter uh, with you. There's two letters. One has a date on top and one doesn't. The one that we'll be looking at right now is the one that does not have a date. This is called a management letter, um, and it kind of just details out some of our findings uh, during the audit process. Um, all the issues we noted this year are repeat issues from last year. And I think the reason for this, obviously the board would like to see some of these go away, is because the finance officer left during the year, and so some of these issues were not addressed. And I think they're currently being addressed by the finance officer, but of course Nancy did not start uh, back until August. Um, I'll briefly go over these and remind you of what they were from last year. Uh, accounting policies and procedures manual. Uh, the finance office currently does not have a manual uh, showing how the finance operations are done by the town. And I kind of joked last year, you know, you need to have one of these in place in case, you know, Mandy was the finance officer last year, and in case she wins the lottery and, you know, leaves, but, you know, obviously she did leave for no job. So it's very important that the town has this manual in place so any future finance officer can come in and, you know, start looking at right off on how the town uh, conducts its accounting. The second uh, one we have is canceling invoices. Uh, it's very important uh, that when you pay an invoice that you cancel and when I say can't, can't cancel, you, you know, stamp it paid in order to make sure that uh, invoices are not paid twice. Um, I have seen this happen uh, over audits in the past and, you know, companies or governments have lost money because they paid uh, invoices twice mistakenly. So we have, uh, you know, issues as we keep finding that during our disbursement testing, we noted that uh, invoices were not being canceled properly. Uh, capital assets. Currently, the audit firm holds all the fixed assets and depreciation software. Uh, we suggest the town do this and have the software capable of doing this. We've already talked to Nancy about this and she agrees and will be working on this in the future. Uh, personnel files. Uh, some of the testing we do relates to personnel files and relates to uh, payroll. Uh, per current files does not have salary rates of town personnel in it, so we cannot do an adequate test of payroll to make sure that the town personnel are being uh, paid properly by reviewing the personnel files. Uh, we suggested that this be added to the files last year, and once again, we did not see that in the files this year, um, but we've talked to the finance officer and we'll be working on that in the future. Uh, Post-employment benefits, and this is something for the future. Um, currently, the post-employment benefit uh, liability is immaterial to the financial statements, but as the town grows and as the uh, benefit increases over the future years, this could become a material uh, matter, so we suggest uh, you know, looking at an actuary in the future to determine uh, the exact value. Right now it is an estimate. Uh, the last thing that's not really a, a finding whatsoever, but it's more of a recommendation, has to do with the town's current accounting software. Uh, we noted talking to last year's finance officer and this year's uh, finance officer and actually dealing with the uh, accounting software itself and trying to extract information from it, that it is a very uh, cumbersome uh, software to use and does not give the exact reports uh, needed from a day-to-day -day operational basis. And we have suggested uh, looking into switching softwares with the finance officer. But I said that's a future uh, probability there. The next thing I want to talk about is exactly how the audit went. And this will, uh, the other letter dated November 11, 2014. And this letter you will see every year from the audit firm, and just telling you basically telling you how the audit went from our perspective. Um, I'm happy to report that audit went very smoothly. Uh, we had co complete cooperation from the staff. Uh, we had no disagreements with the staff, and we had no difficulties encountered during the audit. Uh, Nancy stepped into a difficult situation, obviously, uh, you know, starting back in August and having to deal with auditors uh, a couple weeks right into getting the job. Um, we're asking her many questions from when you know, she wasn't even here, from the year she didn't even, wasn't the finance officer. Uh, so we received complete cooperation. Everything went very well from our standpoint. Uh, this letter is a standard letter, no modifications to the wording. I want to go over a few brief highlights of the financial statements uh, for June 30th, uh, 2014. The town's uh, total assets, and you can follow along. along um, it starts on page. 15 and 16 are the um, statement of financial position and statement of activities for the town for 2014. Uh, total assets for the town increased from, for 2014 compared to 2013. It's about a $20,000 increase, but it's the increase. Uh, the town's debt decreased uh, from compared to 2013. The town's debt went from about $3.1 million in 2013 to uh, nearly $2.6 million uh, in 2014. So assets slightly up, uh, debt. Uh, decreasing, so that's good news on both those fronts. 
The unrestricted fund balance of June 30th, 2014 was just over $4 million, uh, compared to just about $3.6 million in uh, 2013. Um, important thing to note, the reserves from unrestricted fund balance total about 246 days. So if for any reason the town had received no additional money as of June 30th, 2014, you could continue operating based on unrestricted fund balance for 246 days. Um, this is very good for municipality, uh, very good for any government uh, agency. Um, so you're well, you're well over half a year, which we like to see. Good news there. Uh, total expenses in 2014 were just slightly over $6 million compared to just slightly under $6 million in 2013. Uh, the cost of operating the town in 2014 was about $16,600 per day, uh, compared to about $16,400 per day in 2013, so slight increase. Uh, the change in net position in 2014, this is basically profit or loss, uh, was $560,000 total, uh, compared to about $960,000 total in 2013. A uh, slight decrease, a uh, major reason for that is last year you did receive a grant from the Department of Commerce relating to the Hillsborough Street line, and from and that grant was a one-time grant, and that was about $850,000, I believe. The cash balance of June 30, 2014 was just slightly over $5.6 million compared to just slightly over $5 million last year. So the profits continued, and cash balance increased about, about $600,000 during the year. Your capital assets total went down slightly compared to 2013. Uh, the reason for this was depreciation. Um, you did have about $400,000 uh, in your position and fixed assets during the year, but your depreciation was greater than that. Uh, the change in long-term debt. Uh, you continued to pay off debt. Uh, it decreased $436,000 during 2013-14, uh, but you did not take on any new debt during that time period. Uh, so your debt did decrease. Part of the reason your overall liabilities decreased during the year. That is all I have. I'll be glad to entertain any questions. Any questions from the board? I read through the audit and uh, very clearly stated and uh, mostly good news, so I don't have any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So our next item is uh, the rezoning request for this for a forward. Fast, do you want to leave this one off? This is rezoning request 2014-03, Pittsburgh Ford, uh, Boyette Nelson LLC is proposing a new zone approximately 1.3 acres adjacent to the existing Pittsburgh Ford dealership from RA, Residential Agricultural, to C2, Highway Commercial. A public hearing was conducted on November 24, 2014, and you have there in your packet uh, motions to approve and or motions to deny. And uh, for the board's information, uh, we did receive a valid <coughs> petition for annexation. Is that for just this property or for the combined properties of this property? It's for Ford's in, it's in, already in. inside, okay. yes, so this is just for the, the, the affected property. Any questions from the board? If you're, are you going for your notes? I have a few. Sure. I have one question. Um, on the uh, street, just going back to the neighbors, is splitting the... Uh, Lot, correct? And I guess this is to Mr. Nelson more or less. Is there a possibility if when you down in the future if you decide to put a lot on both sides of that street to move that road closer to the Moore property and maybe horseshoe the road back in there where your lot would be together? Yeah, yeah, I consider that. It right now it's it's straight down. Right. Uh, <coughs> 
there will always be plenty of access for them to cars. Uh -huh. But if, um, you know, looking at it, you could horseshoe it and come out. Either way would be fine. I'll just, you know, concerned possibly about the um, tenants, you know, the people living in the back. And it may make your lot a little more addressing and having a road through the middle of it. Yeah. yeah. Also with the tree uh, buffer too, right? Yeah. Well, I put a, I put a tree down the buffer on the right side. Uh -huh. So yeah, I could. You know, we you could work through it. You could entertain like yeah, that. Yeah, right? I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Yeah, it would, it, either way, uh, it would. Um, you know, we can keep it together. Run that road on the right side. Either way, it would be fine. Okay. Yeah. I think I well, while we're on the subject of the roads, do we know whether or not there's a, is there a recorded easement that shows that gravel road, or is that just a road that's... It's a recorded easement. It's a private easement. So the road between the, the two parcels is... is on it's on a plat, yes, sir. For which part? I guess the, the, the newly acquired property is where the uh, road <coughs> easement is. Okay. Yeah, and then it goes back... And it's a, it's a private road. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Not a town road. That's right. Okay. And are there any? Do we have any utilities run down that road? Yeah. Yes, sir. Apparently, the um, the Franciscans have a lot of sewer. Okay. And one of the questions I wrote down for myself is if if there's a if there. Are, this is another one of those instances that we ran into in a previous uh, rezoning request where we have the houses, the houses that are homes that are isolated uh, and landlocked from any town street. <coughs> Apparently, what we have with some here that are uh, served by town utilities that go down this combined uh, street easement and uh, utility easement. And I don't know what the future intention of the town would be about you know, if, we, if we already have a utility easement in there. I don't, I don't think we do. I think it's just a private line that was tapped into the main there at the road. So the water meter is up at the front yeah. right, up, up to the roadway and beyond I, that is... I'm assuming that. I don't know that for a fact. But that's, you know, that's what I think. I, uh, I've seen that happen before where there's a three-quarter inch line that goes from mm -hmm. uh, Thompson Street back and, and any maintenance of that line is the homeowner's responsibility. Right. That's not an ideal situation, but that's that's what we as the cards we've been dealt with. So. Okay. And there are two parcels <coughs> behind this lot served by that access easement. Yes. Sir. Do both parcels have water in front? Well water not not the one that's the furthest away, just the okay. the immediate parcel adjacent to the to the property that's under request. And it's, is it gravity sewer or is there a pump involved? I don't know. Just a question about the tree buffer. Is that something that needs to be a part, you know, if we were to approve this, that um, does that need to be a part of the wording, the, the tree buffer? Can we make that part of the um, I'd probably defer to Mr. Messick, but this is a, a straight rezoning and not a conditional rezoning. Um, we do have some standards as far as development with, you know, commercial property uh, being developed adjacent to residential. There are some buffer requirements now. And that would buffer <coughs> the, the parcels to the rear that are the residential use. Right. And parcels to the east, which are residential uses as well, but wouldn't do much for the driveway. No. And I share Commissioner Farrell's concern about the driveway and access and not having an individual have to drive through what I expect will be a, a dealership lot to go to my home. And I'd like for it to, to more function more as a residential driveway. So. Perhaps relocation is a great idea, but if it isn't relocated, I'd, I'd sure like to, when the site plan comes in, see, you know, attempt for uh, buffering and, and providing for a residential feel to that access point. Yeah, 
Yeah, comment I had about the tree buffering is uh, Mr. Nelson seems willing to do that. Uh, uh, and some of the correspondence we have from uh, nearby residents ask questions about well, what happens if the land should transfer to a future owner. And I don't think uh, it, uh, a simple rezoning would require a future owner to respect those trees. They could come down if they wanted it's their property and their trees. Uh, well, as long as it's two distinct. Um, you know, the, the zoning districts are commercial adjacent to residential. There is a, a buffer requirement. Okay. That's, that's just part of the, uh, the zoning limits and, and site plan development. I wonder if the uh, adjacent neighbor would rather have the trees on their property. <laughs> guarantee their future existence. Well, it's a negotiation between the two property owners. The town can't require it, I don't think, on the rezoning. Uh, it just occurred to me, if I was the property owner, I wanted to assure the long-term uh, existence of those trees. I might want to negotiate with Mr. Nelson and have him put on my side of the property line so that I didn't have to refight this battle 30 years from now. And this before four outgrows the lot and moves some other place because we're so widely successful. We definitely put trees yeah. down that side. Okay. Yeah, we definitely do that. So, uh, Mr. Nelson, so you've spoken with all of those individuals? Yes. And they yes. have agreed to, and you told them that uh, you had Shirley's agreed the one to that wrote them. the letter, yes. and she visited with me Friday, and that's why I said we would definitely put the trees down that property line. That was her biggest request. Yes. Okay. And I was, and as it sits now, you agreed to put them on your property. Yes. So not her. Yeah, we put our property going down. So it would give her even more buffer. You know, I would put them down our line, our, yeah. our property line. That, that so makes, it would, it would yeah. block, she would have tree, just looking trees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course, that keep makes her a lot larger than if she puts trees on her side of the line. And we've made the road better already as far as more rock and gravel. Some point we've paved and paved it for them. You're talking about the, the access for them. It's always been a road that gets muddy through rain and stuff. So we've already added rock to improve that for them. to approve an, award, an ordinance amend, amending the zoning ordinance and the zoning map of town Pittsboro, case REZ-2014-03. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. The uh, petition for rezoning is approved. Thank you. Uh, 
Old business number three, rezoning request uh, for Chatham Park PDD, rezoning 2014-2. And Mr. Baskin, want to leave this one off? Uh, yes, sir. Very briefly, this is rezoning request 2014-04, Chatham Park LLC, uh, plan development district with the master plan. And the proposal is adding approximately 46 acres to previously approved plan development district uh, that was approved this past June 9, 2014. I've uh, listed there the uh, separate parcels. There have also been um, some tax changes which have been incorporated into the master plan, primarily in uh, chapters or articles 8 and 10. And uh, just a point of clarification, this request uh, affects the entire assemblage, the entire uh, land area that was rezoned in June and has approved the rezoning and supersede the June 9th approval. And a public hearing was conducted uh, on November 24th. Do you have a specific language change that you would recommend? It's really more of a designation. Okay. Maybe Brian can help with this. She's working on it. Yeah, she's working on it.
we, when we voted on this before, it was really more of a designation about whether it would be considered, whether the greenways are considered part of the parcel recreation or part of the transportation plan. And I was just suggesting that we make that part of transportation and not, not make it part of our parks a lot more. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying, but if the, if the board agrees with you, we would need to uh, parse out what pages of the master plan relate to that and what specific language changes. It's very simple, it's just a matter of designation. Okay. Well, I think that the greenways do have a transportation component to them, but I also think of them more as a recreational use so that's my personal opinion um, and as far i think i part of your um, point was funding for construction of them is that correct and i think this document clearly states that chatham park will be constructing them as far as maintenance and that is grants to help maintain them right and well I think, I, I don't know if there are grants that won't provide for maintenance costs to the greenways, but that was as a recreational uh, feature. I know we get grants for recreational purposes uh, periodically. So. Um, but I think that these trails are also going to be used a lot by commuters. I mean, that's the thing that the whole town park is saying, that you'll be able to bike to work, mm -hmm. you'll be able to uh, bike to shopping. And I do think that the greenway are going to be used a lot by commuters. It's going to help reduce um, traffic in the morning on the roads. Um, yeah, but what's funny is, is not only this is going to be people be able to ride their bikes to work, ride their bikes to shop, and that's it. It is going to be a transportation mm -hmm. option for people as a way of getting from point A to point B. It's not just going to be recreation. It's going to be very functional. It's going to be a way to uh, yeah. put some people in together. And really, a big piece of it is we have such a really a small amount of area that's been designated for open space. And if we count the um, greenways as part of that open space, it just reduces the amount of uh, parks that we have for the community and, uh, and conservation area for the community. So to me, this is a really important designation. It's, it's, it's going to add up as far as space goes. Because to me, it seems like something that's going to be great. I'd like to say the DOT considers bike lanes as transportation. Yeah. And so many of these, when you look at the language, it really is a talks about. And a lot of these, if you look at the map, a lot of these greenways are just off the road. They're really, in essence, sidewalks. And we don't count sidewalks as recreation, so why should we call it? called greenways that follow the road exactly like the sidewalk. Why should that be called recreational? In truth, it's transportation. It's to encourage people to walk and to ride their bikes. I believe also that the, the network of roadways that this project will is committed to are the NCDOT standards uh, for um, complete streets, which include sidewalks and bike lanes as well. So when I see a bike lane in the public right of way, I definitely think of it as a transportation component. Uh, when I think of a bike lane outside of the public right of way, even if it is perhaps parallel to the roadway, I do think of it as a greenway. And I do associate greenways with recreation. We may have a group of purpose. Again, the purpose of the greenways for Chatham Park is to connect people to their workplace and to shopping. So I think with this new concept, it's so much more than recreation. And, and again, do it for the parks, do it for people that have more public park space. It's just a simple thing. Can we 
can we uh, sort of pull the board and see if we have a consensus on uh, Commissioner Foley's suggestion here? Seems reasonable to me. Uh, not sure where in the document we would execute that change. But, uh, is that something? Can we, uh, can we go in front of the applicant? Certainly. If you have questions of the applicant, you can ask.
about the amount that the land that it takes to have the greenways is going to be deducted from the public park space. Is that correct? So there will be that much less public yeah, I don't park know space than we would have as part of the allotment. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it might be characterizing it more as it's considered part of greenway space more than it's deducted from it. Well, it's my understanding it would be reduced from the park allotment. Um, Chatham Park is held to a particular amount of um, park allotment, and it would be deducted from that park allotment. So it would actually reduce the number of park space that we would have. Well, I think the document uh, says that it is credited towards recreation. Right. As so you consider test house right, it's considered right. part of our park space. Yeah. Rather than so the there is a certain amount of recreation space to be provided, and you just would count against that recreation yeah. space. Um, depends on the length of it. Um, I think that it's calculated on the width of the facility and the corresponding easement. Um, and I don't think the easement width is defined. Um, there's talk about the greenways being 10 foot wide asphalt. So, you know, reasonable width would be five feet on either side of that for maintenance and, and those types of issues. So it could be a 20 foot wide corridor. It'll add up to a lot that we would lose in park space. I would suggest that you gain it in park space as part of the greenway system. And the question of maintenance, we intend to maintain the greenways ourselves. But it's not, true. I mean, it's, part, it's deducted from the It's not allotted. deducted. It is part of the parkland, the formula that was included. And, and I know of no case where we had a separate vote on that particular item. The, 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 it's hard to take this document and pull a piece out. Uh, this parkland is part of the parkland is greenway and we believe that it is accurately addressed and adequately addressed in the document we will maintain the greenways we will maintain the facilities there we will be maintaining the open space in large portions some of it will become public parkland if you take a public park and turn it into a baseball field, you would not say that you've deducted from the parkland to turn it into another amenity. Right, but the it greenway is, is one of the many amenities. Okay, so maybe deductive sounds negative, but it, it was part of the allotment. It would take up part of the allotment that, that Chatham Park has been required to provide as permit. And what we propose is to state that at least how much we will put in. That is not the limit to say that we will put no more. We could end up with more green space, more open space, more parkland than what we are required by this time. But it's true that this the greenways would count as part of your allotment. Yes, okay, so yes, that's my point. Yes, it, it would, and, and we believe that that is correct, mm -hmm. and uh, we would we would hold to that standard. That is the standard that we presented in the. I just want to point out to the board that if, if this is designated as transportation, Sorry. still have bike lanes, the bike lanes, but. And we also, in addition, would have the park space. So that's but my point is this is going to be deducted from the allocation of park space simply because we designated park space instead of transportation. And I think there's never, we haven't had a community like this built. And I think it's more communities that are built like this that bikeways will be considered transportation because it's going, it's going to be, people will be riding their bikes to work. But it's not public transportation. It's not a public pipeline, unless it is a public pipeline, it's more of a public green pipeline, and it's not going to be eligible to power, or it's going to be eligible to power. That's not the only point here. The point is it would be, it would be, the allocation would be taken out from the allocation of the parks in the town. Do you know a, uh, an estimated length of the greenway that's not associated with a public roadway on this map? I do not have a reasonable calculation. Okay. And when we look at this map, there are two designations. One item in the legend is called an on-street connection. The other is a greenway trail reservation. Yes, sir. And I read that to mean the on-street connection is not part of a greenway, nor, to, nor is it credited towards Recreation. I agree. Yes, Only sir. the Greenway Trail Reservation. Yes, sir. Okay. Where, where, a, where, a, 
right? Where a between where you're on street, it's an upgraded sidewalk. It makes connections to greenways, but it's still a sidewalk. But it's a sidewalk. And we wouldn't be wanting to do a sidewalk and a greenway. It would be a greenway that would replace a sidewalk along the road. So those sidewalks that are replacing the greenway, does that count towards your allocations of park? Excuse me? I just want to be clear. So those, the greenways that are adjacent to the street, basically they're nice sidewalks. So you're saying that that would not count as part of your park designation? I would think there might be some case where it would, but we would be presenting to you that and say this is the land we propose to be part of the park, just as all other land that has to be considered suitable and acceptable to be open space or parkland. But there are cases where something might be. Uh, I, I, I don't know that I have a, a definitive line that I can say this would be park and this would not. But you will be in the process of reviewing and approving those areas that become part of what is acceptable parkland or what is acceptable. It sounds to me like we would be counting like sidewalks as part of our parks. Is that what we want? Sidewalks are definitely considered transportation. Yes, yeah, sidewalks. Sidewalks are sidewalks that are required. They're not counted against. Right. Yes, some of these are, are the same as sidewalks, it's just you call it greenways, but they're I was saying, I was saying, as, Ms. as Commissioner Fioco had mentioned, there's certain amounts of space that might be beside a greenway, that it might be 25 feet because of the slope or something like this, and it might be appropriate to be part of the greenway or the open space that's beside it. That's all I was trying to say, is not to be, that no land beside a road could be parkland. No, it could be. It, it might be the best choice of the land to have that property beside a road or beside a sidewalk or beside a on street greenway be part of the park or part of open space. But that will have to bring it down to you for your, especially the parkland, the town has to accept the parkland. Well, I guess I, I think of it as a sidewalk typically being, let's say, five foot wide concrete associated with curb and gutter, three foot little grass strip. If it's got a swale, then it's going to meander, but it's basically going to be within the public right of way. Yes. And it's going to be publicly maintained, part of the roadway system. You talking about some of these connections, and what I hear you saying is the character of the greenway which is described as about a 10 foot wide asphalt path. Yes, sir. Now when it joins that sidewalk, it goes from what we would call a sidewalk to a multimodal path. But if it's in the public right of way, I don't see that counting it would not as no, sir. recreation. It's an improved multimodal path for the benefit of those traveling along it, but it is not counting towards recreation. It would not. It's transport. It, that's for it transportation. transportation. Yes, sir. I think it'd be a simple decision to say that the bike, the uh, greenway, are the transportation network, and then we would not have to reduce our allocation to the parks. Um, they're already small. We do not believe the that the allocation for parks, in any way, shape, or form, is small. It is a very high percentage. It is my my concern is that. Um, Chatham Park has been granted a great deal of density, and in exchange for the density, the expect, my expectation was that there would be greater proportion of um, natural space and park space. And really what you're doing is more typical. It's not exceptional, and to me, I would expect more in exchange for the great deal of density that you're getting. So I'm not seeing it. Okay, I think, I think uh, Commissioner Foley's made her, her attention to clear. When we follow the deduction for park space or credit for park space, I think where that leaves us is if, if the board is in support of her proposal to uh, characterize greenways as transportation rather than uh, a credit to or deduction from park space, then what we would need to do is, uh, I don't think we can do it on the fly. If the, we would need to find the text uh, in the document that relates to that and proposes a specific language change, and I don't know if we can do that on the fly tonight. But, uh, if, 
the board is in agreement with Commissioner Fogel, we, we would need to take time to uh, <coughs> through the document and find out where the text should be changed to affect that change. So what's the will of the board? Or do we want to take the time to do that? Or are we happy with the characterization of Greenways as a credit toward the uh, requirement for park space? They always have that. Hold the board. Commissioner Farrell, where do you go? I see, um, I see both uh, sides to this. Um, so uh, <coughs> I, I feel comfortable um, how it is in the plan. Okay. Commissioner Ford has made her position clear. Commissioner Kimiko. I associate Greenways with recreation and use them as such. And I know there's another component to them that get me from point A to B. And there will be those who take advantage of that, but I really think it is more appropriate as a recreation amenity. Well, basically, I do understand in reference to Greenways and that taking account toward the parks. But uh, my question is also, when we get the site plan, if we decide that we don't want to call that or consider that as a greenway and count that toward park land, can we not say that? I think you have the ability to review that at that point. Because, and that way, that way, if we don't want to call it that, then we don't have to call it that. We can consider that as transportation. Is that not correct? So basically, uh, I think we can leave it as, as it is. And, but I do have one other question in reference to the management of the greenways. It's indicated in here that if it is transferred to a private entity, that that particular private entity, including the town or whomever, would be the individuals that would be taking care of those greenways. The question would be at that point whether when we offered uh, say a particular segment to the town uh, that you would be taking over the maintenance but it would come in public greenway. We believe that the vast majority of the greenways we will continue to count, we will continue to operate. We just felt it was important to make it available to the town if they said that they wanted this section to be part of a town system. That can happen also but our intention is to maintain these areas ourselves and not put the burden of that maintenance on the town. And those qualifying greenways would have no restriction whatsoever on public access. No, sir. Not at all. Not at all. Mr. Turner? Um, well, I agree with Commissioner Garrell. I can see both sides, but I also agree with Commissioner Morgan. And at the end of the day, we're, we're going to decide individually at some point what's acceptable and what's not. So. Okay. It appears that the consensus of the board is that uh, characterizing greenways as credit for park space is acceptable. The proviso that as we review site plans, we may uh, make some requests to the developer to reconsider certain, certain areas. Anybody like to open another topic? Another question? <coughs> says uh, within two years following final amount of appealable approval of Chatham Park PDD zoning and master plan applicant working cooperatively with the town will submit for consideration by the town a development agreement in accordance with section 168 
and SEC of North Carolina and general statutes in a conflict between the master plan and provisions of development agreement agreed to by the applicant and the town shall be controlled by the development agreement. Uh, I'm not happy with that arrangement and I think it should be reversed and read as follows. Uh, in the two years following uh, final non-appealable non approval of the Chatham Park PED zoning and master plan, the town working cooperatively with the applicant will negotiate and execute the development agreement in accordance with section 160A-400.20 at SEC of North Carolina General Statutes. I don't think we want the applicant to, uh, to write the development agreement and then give us an opportunity to redline and make marginal changes. I think the town ought to take the lead in writing that and hire, uh, if we can't do it with in-house resources, think about a higher uh, qualified consultant to assist us in that endeavor. I agree. I do feel that this is something that the town should create, not I mean, because the, the PTD zoning was done by the Chatham Park, and I think it ends up, instead of coming from a place of what the town sees as most important, it ends up being us just making little changes to theirs. And I think it's important that we maintain that ability to do that. I, I thought the town was doing that too, actually. And you guys had said that at one point. So. Well, I, I don't think it's really accurate to characterize <laughs> the town's role as red marking an agreement. An agreement is where two parties agree. If they don't agree, there is no agreement. And, I mean, we are going to invest the time and energy. We're going to hire consultants if we need to to go outside of our resources. But somebody's got to take the first step in creating a document. And I don't object to the applicant making that first representation as to an agreement. We can respond to it as opposed to the town generating, using our resources to generate the first draft. So I, I don't think it's accurate to say that we would have limited ability to amend an agreement in any way, shape, or form. I'm not, I'm not questioning our ability to amend the agreement. What I'm, what I'm uh, trying to get at is uh, I, want a, I want a starting point, a development agreement that, that the focus is to uh, protect the citizens of the town of Pittsburgh and uh, the best interests of the business of the taxpayers of the town of Pittsburgh. Not Please don't. Uh, not necessarily. If, if you do it the other way around, what you get is an, a, a development agreement whose primary purpose is to protect the best interests of the developer. And those, if you put those two documents side by side, they will look remarkably different. I'm just saying, let's start with the one that's closer to uh, what we want to be the end product. Of the I think the town needs to take the lead in that. And I do. I agree with that. The town needs to take the lead in that. And of course, you know, we work along with the developers, of course. But I think the town needs to take the lead in that for sure. Well, that's what I thought we'd agree on as a collaborative process. But there, us, there was an extensive discussion at one of the previous meetings. And the wording that you see here was the wording that was agreed to at that meeting and the cooperatively <coughs> was the word that was placed in there. We're talking about a development agreement that's a legal document between two parties. There is no case where the town can be forced to sign anything that they don't want to sign or to go into an agreement that they don't want to go into. We feel like it does need to be, if we understood that the mayor and, and other members felt like they wanted more cooperation, that's what we tried to address here. Uh, we need, somebody needs to start this, uh, and uh, we have said that we will start it.
and, but it is a cooperative process that is is equal between parties because both parties have to agree to the final document. I think if I may too, and this, this was discussed at the previous meetings, but whether we get meeting the town, whether the town takes the first step or whether um, Chatham Park investors take the first step, it's, it's potato potato in a way because if, if we take the first step, they in turn will be taking measures to make sure that, that the, the agreement cooperatively works for them. Um, yeah. I'm not seeing a difference between who begins and who begins. We're all way down the same place. We have, we have to literally be on the same page before the development of this one. So, and, however, I, I completely understand, and I, I, wearing the town's hat, we can certainly take the first crack at it. But there again, just like we can change it, they could, they could end up suggesting things as well. However, you guys I want expect to say what? Like the start of the <laughs> so we in the town's point of view. Uh, it sounds to me like we have a consensus from the board that uh, that we would like to ask for that change. If, um, one question, Mr. Mayor. We did um, go this route and assume the town taking it on first. Would um, when we go back? the Marks group or the Clarion group or will we just have a set a separate contract <coughs> to handle this? I think we could we could instruct the manager to go any number of ways. I think uh, it's a significant piece of work. Uh, either the Lawrence group or Clarion group could do it or a third group. Uh, I think it's a large enough piece of work that uh, we would probably instruct the manager to uh, put out a uh, Request for qualifications, and uh, you know, Clarion would be welcome to apply for it. Orange Group would be welcome to apply for it, and any of the others that have uh, uh, sought to help us with this project in the past would also be uh, welcome to uh, respond to the RFQ. Just Mayor, may I just interject here? This language in this particular section is part of a requirement on the part of the developer to do certain things. The two-year uh, period of time is where they're supposed to pr provide these additional elements. This, mass, this development agreement is the same sort of thing. It is an obligation on their part that the town is imposing that they've got to come up with the information that will be necessary to submit a proposed development agreement. That's going to, <clears throat> excuse me, that's going to depend on their projections of capacity needs and, and all sorts of things like that that we cannot you can have a, a sample development agreement if you want to, but without their information about what their needs are, it's going to be impossible to do it. This is an obligation. I mean, you're, you're letting them off the hook, essentially, by saying that we're going to come up with a, a development agreement. And, and it really uh, is contrary to what we've been talking about all along. That this is an obligation on their part to come up with what they think they need. The town can agree or reject it or come up with its own plan. Um, and the process by which you do that is, of course, an entirely different matter altogether that they don't have anything to do with. Um, but I, I do think you're, you're, you say that the town has to do something within two years, they, they don't have to do anything. They just sit back. So the, the obligation is on their part now under this language. Mr. Mayor, if I could, I, I, I understand <clears throat> what your interests are, and I think it's not who makes the first step. We need to take this step together. It's not us responding to your document or y'all responding to our document. It's us generating this document in a workshop. Mr. Grusbeck, we talked about this a ways back. The way this document has to be formed is you put the elements down that are important to the town, important to the developer agreement to function, and step by step we'll get to where we know whether it's a consultant that the town desires to have assistance with or whether we say, here's a draft of what we've done in our workshops that are elements that are important to both parties. We're not trying to take the ball and run with it. As Mr. Messick said, this was a requirement that we had. The method of how we get to a developer agreement, 
our spirit of doing it as a team effort is where we are first and foremost in trying to end up in a document that works. Okay, I appreciate that. And uh, in the spirit of cooperation, I would suggest that uh, you might reach out and agree to the change that we proposed here. No. I, I'm not sure I understand exactly what the change. Well, I can read it to you again. Okay. When the two years following final non-appealable approval of the Chevron Park PDD zoning master plan, the town, working cooperatively with the applicant, will negotiate and execute a development agreement in accordance with Section 160A-400.20 at SEC North Carolina General Statutes. That's different from the text that's in there now. It reverses the responsibility. It does reverse the obligation. And it obligates the town to spend its tax revenue in developing an agreement. Yeah, I want that responsibility. <laughs> It seems to me, Mr. Mayor, it's very difficult to say, shall negotiate and execute. Uh, we hope we reach agreement, but we have no assurance anytime you're talking about an agreement. That requires a meeting of minds, and you have no assurance that that will occur. We, it's got to be cooperative. Well, that's true in either case, whether you present the first draft or we present the first draft. <laughs> But you can't, I, I, I mean, the, the, the general statutes don't require that there be a development in a project. It's a consensual thing between the municipality and the developer. Mm -hmm. We certainly hope, and it's our goal, that we reach consensus. And, and, but it, it, it's like someone said, it really doesn't matter who proposes the first draft. Well, as good. Then let's let us do it. As long as it's understood that it, it's going to be a negotiation and the mayor may not reach it. I think that's understood whoever starts it. And like I said, I want the town to have the responsibility to, to do the initial draft. Mayor, I have to ask, is the town suggesting that you can meet the deadline identified in this? I mean, the deadline in this was imposed on us for it to happen within two years. Now we're talking about the town having a deadline to meet our requirements. There are other standards oh, that did, we, what? We, have, we have applied to us that say we must have this development agreement in place within a certain amount of time. Well, what it says is that you get two years to uh, finalize the master plan, and after that, we begin work on the development. There is other language in the text that binds us to need and have the development going in place. Well, let's fix that too. Uh, we don't have anything to do with that. We clearly have a difference of opinion. I have one question. Um, regarding the two years, um, is that from June, the first agreement, or is that from possibly tonight? It would be from tonight. If we adopt this amendment, this language is associated with this amendment. So we'll and if we do not, we'll go back to June. With the two years, it's pushed back again and again and again. So this could happen for eternity. The, the two years could go on for eternity, and the restriction on land development would be valid as well. 5% residential, 15% right. commercial, or so mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So it says within two years following final non-appealable approval of Chatham Park PDD zoning. So uh, if non-appealable is a reference to our ongoing court case, uh, does, the, does the clock start when the uh, court case is finally adjudicated? Yes. Okay. So that's when the clock starts. This would be a brand new approval. Wouldn't there need to be a new appeal to this approval? Could be. It depends on how it plays out. Yeah. But this, this development agreement was just like one of the additional elements. And we said, developer, you must perform. You, just like all the additional elements, you come up with a stormwater plan. You come up with a master public facilities plan. You come up with a public art plan, a affordable housing plan, a stormwater man manual. You 
produce these documents that the town will review and approve. This is just another one of those items. We need to keep them on the hook for performing, not put the performance um, requirement on the town. They must present these things to us, and that doesn't say that we're going to have an agreement. It says you have to produce it for the possibility of having an agreement. And we will make every effort to make sure that agreement happens. That was the whole cooperative effort that we know we need that agreement. <coughs> Well, I would disagree, Commissioner Kyoko, that it's just another element of the master plan. That the development agreement is, is far more uh, impactful than just another section of the master plan. I think it's a mistake. The PDD ordinance didn't come from us in the first place because it has, um, it's very vague. It's going to get straight vague. It'll be density, but it doesn't spell out how that happens. I think there's potentially a fair there. There are so many different ways that a tax amendment to the ordinance can occur. The town can initiate it, but citizens can initiate it as well. And that's what happened with the PED. Citizens initiated a tax amendment to our ordinance, and we worked through it with them when we adopted it. Consensus of the board is that uh, the change I proposed has supported the board. Uh, yeah, we're still uh, out. Yeah. Well, I will say so. There's no consensus. After hearing from Mr. Messick and all, he's declaring I consensus. still think we should leave it as it is and, let, and having the applicant working cooperatively with the town as it has brought about here. Because that is a very large undertaking for us to get in at home. It's enormous. Right? Yep. 
Well, what, what if we said either party may, may propose within two years, as long as there's an opposition within two years? And if the town wants to prepare a draft, if you could certainly do so, we, we could as well. He wants that. The town's not ready to. Uh, this uh, I don't see how you could create a development agreement unless we actually have specifics of the development. Um, well, again, it's, we're talking about after yeah. after final approval of the Chatham Park PDD, which is a document that was, that we sit here today is probably 50 percent completed. So we have you know, a lot of time between. Well, yeah. No, my only what I'm trying to say, my only point is, is that until we actually know what kind of rooftops we're dealing with. I, I don't know how we come up with the specifics of the development plan for them to react to. In, in a way, we need we need more development information to kind of feed the development agreement. And from there, it's, it's on. It's um, we can generate a document, call it a development agreement, but I don't know if it actually speaks to the nuts and bolts of the development. Well, and the PDD will if it is approved this evening, will be complete. The PDD will be done. The PDD includes an obligation of the developer to perform 11 or 12 additional items. So we, this PDD requires and demands, obligates the developer to perform. And that's where we want the onus, is for them to perform. And I would agree that uh, with respect to completion of the master plan, you're absolutely right, but uh, with respect to the development agreement, that's a separate, distinct document that's going to drive uh, what occurs on this development uh, over the next 30 to 40 years. And, and I do want the town to have the responsibility to take the lead on this. So, where should we proceed from here? Pull the board. Commissioner Fioko suggests we pull the board on this topic. Uh, in the book, well, what I'll, uh, how I'll frame the poll is, uh, do you uh, support or not support? Uh, do you support the proposed change that I've made, or do you support leaving the language as it is in the current document? So, Commissioner Farrell, do you support the change that I recommended? I support uh, leaving it as the document is. Commissioner Foley, do you support the change that I recommended? I support the change. Commissioner Field, could you support the change that I recommended? I do not support the change. Commissioner Baldwin, do you support the change I recommended? No, I do not. Commissioner Turner? No. Yeah. Resolve. 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 It's just consensus. It's against them. Can I vote now? Say that. It can say something else. 
now, as it's written now, Within the master plan, we're giving two years to do certain items. If those items are all completed, certainly that a, a new master plan would not include that two years. If we've got all the additional elements done, there wouldn't be any reason for that two-year delay. And it's our intention to have all of those documents, all those additional elements, finished as quickly as we possibly can finish them. We hope to be very timely in that. I'm working on the schedule of June 9th. The, the, the issue that was raised, it was the matter of the, of the pending lawsuit that caused it to be non-appealable. Yes, sir. It does start the clock in this case as of this, as of the vote. But that is not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to move things out. And if the board, if we ever came back with more land, which as a, my understanding is right now, we're not looking at additional land. And one of your planning board members is even suggesting maybe UDO needs to look at some changes in the procedure for how to make amendments to the master plan, which may come up. But yes, two years. No, it's not our intention. And if we did add other land, the board would certainly, uh, we would hope to have all that stuff, those two years, all those items done so that we can get moving. What that two years is giving us right now is the 5%, the 15%, only up to that two years. Uh, we haven't been able to move that quickly on this item. We'd like to move on knowing that we have the certainty of doing these things within these next two years. Thank you. Make a motion that we approve. <coughs> I have a question. One more thing. In reference to the agreement that we had in reference to certain funding that you would be presenting to the town, I think it was, I'm not sure, bigger, say 300000 uh, We need to know whether you intend to keep that particular agreement. Well, that contract is in place. And that contract is in place. Is in place. I just thought it was associated with the previous one that we had. I just want to say one thing. I'm not going to be able to sleep, live with myself if I don't say this. We have another opportunity to uh, protect some of those important natural areas that I might believe should be done before we, um, we agree to this PDD ordinance and not through the small area plans. We're not doing enough to protect our drinking water. And I don't seem to have the support of the board, but I wouldn't be able to do it myself if I didn't take a stand for that. That's, I, I think we're making a mistake. Okay. So. I'll make a motion that we approve an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance in the town of Pittsburgh zoning map for case REZ 201404 with the amended exhibit B. Before I entertain the motion, I have additional questions. As I'm going through the uh, consistency statement provided by the planning board, I make the observation that it uh, makes a reference to a comprehensive plan, consistency with a comprehensive plan, point out that the town does not have a comprehensive plan. Yes, sir, it does. Not to my knowledge, I've, I've, I've been working in this town for going on seven or eight years now. I've, I've never seen a comprehensive plan. I, I know what a comprehensive plan looks like. I've read comprehensive plans. Okay. We can have this discussion outside. Yeah. We, the town has a comprehensive plan with the little city. Okay. The planning board also said that uh, they found the uh, PDD document and master plan to be consistent uh, with the land use plan. I think it uh, can be uh, demonstrably uh, shown that it's in fact not. 
consistent with Land Use Plan, either in terms of uh, protections of the Haw River or the densities uh, that are postulated. I said that it's reasonable considering the size and location of property subject to the proposed rezoning. I think that's questionable. It says that the proposed, the proposed rezoning provides quality design features. I know that the developer is claiming to do that, uh, but I, there's not enough of a master plan there to uh, make a determination of whether there's quality design features or not. Credits the master plan with uh, sensitivity to environmental issues. I think that, that statement borders on the ridiculous. Advances the public health, safety, and welfare of the town of Pittsburgh. I'm not sure how they determine that. In their uh, written recommendation to the town of Pittsburgh, Again, it says, uh, the proposed rezoning is reasonable considering the size and location of the property. I would disagree with that. Again, quality design features, sensitivity to environmental issues, advances public uh, health and safety. With all due respect to my uh, colleagues on the planning board, I'm not sure that uh, I agree with uh, much of what they put in their uh, recommendations. And in the uh, acceptance resolution that Commissioner Kyoko has moved that we adopt, so the application is consistent with the town's comprehensive plan. Again, I question whether or not we have one, including the land use plan. Again, I say that uh, one could make a reasonable argument that it's not consistent with the land use plan either in terms of the protections of the Haw River the density or the uh, amount of recreation and open space provided. There's a whereas here. This is whereas the Board of Commissioners has determined that the amendment to the zoning's map the proposed application advances the public health and safety and welfare of the town. I don't see how such a determination can be made based on my reading of the master plan. Accordingly, I would ask that the board entertain a change in the signature line of this uh, resolution to read uh, Mayor Pro Tem, as this is not a resolution that I'm prepared to fix my signature to. I think it has uh, misrepresentations of material facts, and uh, therefore, if, if uh, approved, I will not sign it. Uh, defer to Commissioner Baldwin if she's comfortable signing it. As Mayor Pro Tem, she's certainly welcome to do so. I'm not sure why we spent so many years creating a land use plan when the first development comes along and we just say, oh, well, changes happen. Um, it's just, it doesn't work. So it's, I'm not sure why we bothered. Okay, if there are no other questions, Commissioner Fioca has made a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. I'm all opposed. Four. Motion passes. And Madam Clerk, I'd ask that you change the document to reflect it and be signed by the Mayor for the Exhausted at this point. 
you can call me up with questions later. If you wake up in the middle of the night, just wait till about 6.30 and call me in the morning. So Jordan Lake uh, Partnership, we've, we've discussed this for several years now. Um, culmination of that is our two regional water supply plans that have been submitted to the state of North Carolina. They're uh, actually award-winning due to the collaboration with the partners. And briefly, I'm going to discuss the background of the partnership, the intake feasibility study, and the next steps. So the background, as you're well aware, uh, the Piedmont has a large um, area of, of growth projection through 2060. So the partnership got together in 2009 and we worked through a long process of vetting each other's water supply demands, water conservation methods, um, purchase agreement opportunities, interlocal agreement opportunities, drought management, and we did a model to show how droughts in the past would affect Jordan Lake with our moving forward demand on the lake. And we were able to prove that it, it would not have a significant impact on the lake with all of the droughts we've modeled that go back in the history, including droughts in the 50s and the 40s. So the state's reviewing all that currently. So then we submitted an allocation application. The subset of the partnership is Chatham County, Durham, Owasa, and Pittsburgh, Orange Water and Sewer Authority. Um, what what's going on currently is um, let me catch up with that slide. Excuse me. That's fine right there. The these four entities got together as a subset of the partnership and said, you know what, we should get together and look at a regional intake and water treatment plan on the property that Owasa owns. Um, and run the numbers, do the engineering feasibility study based on the allocations that went in from each government to Diener. Okay? So there's the, there's the schedule. Um, keep going, please. There we go. So the interesting part of this graph is Pittsburgh is a zero for current and we're applying for six million gallons a day. Um, we've applied for a level one, which means more immediate, for three million gallons a day, and a level two for the following three million gallons a day. Um, again, you can ask me questions about specifics later, but I think I'll just kind of roll on through the, these numbers, okay? So the idea is we stay ahead of the demand curve, which is the radius line here and in this case um, we hit approximately 2040 where we'd have to build the plant even larger so however the, the far left is 2020 we've been talking about actually that's going to slide out away from 2020 to 2025 or maybe 2030 because there's other ways all these governments can um, put off the large price tag of building this plant with um, uh, purchase contracts and other interconnections and other things we don't even know about yet so we can push off the ultimate construction of this because it's a large large project but um, in the end we all need this water so we all have to start planning we believe immediately okay so part of the planning effort is to look at what our average day totals are for what's called the initial capacity and uh, as you can see, Chatham County has an initial capacity of six and a half, Durham sixteen and a half, and on down. Orange County is actually not a part of this in, uh, anymore. They 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 don't need it. But that's a that's a detail we can talk about later. So we're asking for three. So okay. So part of that planning, thank you. Part of that planning is going to be. Um, well, let me. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um. We've, we've looked at three alternatives, and the, the highest and best value alternative is to build one plant on the Owasa property 
for all to share with the finished water. Okay. So alternative one was selected. Alternative two is two plants. And the second plant would be in, in Durham. So we would pump raw water to Durham and they would treat it at another plant. And the plant on the, the shores of Jordan Lake would be operated by Chatham County and Town of Pittsburgh only. Uh, alternative three is raw water goes to all communities non-treated. Um, with the exception of Pittsburgh and Chatham County. And, I, and these graphs show, the, the red box at the bottom shows the Chatham-Pittsburgh plant with, with two, two other plants. This is the alternative three. The raw would go to Owasa and Durham and they would treat it in their own facility. So it would be only one construction of one plant, which would be the Chatham-Pittsburgh plant. Okay. So 33 MGD would be the capacity of the first phase of the plant. Um, and it would be expanded to 54 when the time came. The partnership has agreed that we don't want to really start talking about dates anymore because we don't really know yet. It's a sliding scale. Okay. So there, there's relative numbers on the left. Um, Pittsburgh is 9% of the total. So whatever the numbers are, we're 9% of that number. Um, for That's for the intake the lift stations and the water treatment plant but then we've got other costs built in that well that are not built in once the water reaches the town limit those that's our uh, that's an additional cost that we haven't calculated yet okay those are the those are the uh, gross numbers and millions of dollars for each alternative going down the line here so alternative one and their capital costs only so for the first phase, 33 million is 243 million dollars, approximately 1940 or 2040, um, and then an additional 74 million for the final phase in 2060 or 2045. Actually, Th those dates show the end year of that build. So again, these are these are rough numbers from an engineering feasibility study that only used best available data. Um, and it's obviously subject to a lot of adjustment and change at moving forward in the planning. Okay? There's the recommended study. It's the lowest cost. Everyone gets treated water from the same facility and it gets uh, pumped out to all the communities. Um, a part of all of this would be interconnect interconnectivity. So um, we, would, we would try to reduce the actual amount this plant can handle in the initial phase. The feasibility study looked at kind of a worst case scenario. So the plant doesn't have to be 33 MGD at the initial phase, but that's just where we're at with the feasibility study. But in any case, this method is the least cost and the least environmental impact due to the number of pipelines that go out, okay? So year one, out to year 25. Um, year one is when we would begin the, our, our next meeting essentially where we talk about policy and technical planning. And what is policy and technical planning? Um, let me just finish the, the rest of these. So there's a strategy on this time, this Gantt chart, to show how things would happen and in year seven or eight, or in year five, five or six, the plant would start getting constructed and it would be operational in year seven. Okay. <laughs> so what we would like to do, um, that's the original version. Can you go ahead and go to the next one? Here's the revised version of what we'd like to do immediately is um, we haven't developed these um, ILAs yet, these interlocal inter agreements, but we're talking about that amongst the partnership to at least start an agreement uh, start talking about two committees, one's policy, one's technical. And the policy committee talks about um, everything from financing to what kind of uh, legal uh, and institutional um, type of formula this could be. Is it owned by one? Is it owned by Durham? Is it owned by Chatham County? Do we all own it? Is it operated by one and is paid in by others? Um, is, it, is it a regional water authority? You know, there's a lot of areas that this could go. The technical committee is looking at the water quality. 
the um, the caught the at drill down into the um, the technical aspects of the water quality and what would this plant do to clean our water? I mean, how um, how we would use technology to clean the water to the level that we want based on what we're finding in the lake. <clears throat> so it would it would include uh, monitoring. Uh, the state's monitoring now, but we we think we need to do more monitoring for for this piece. Um, and seek concurrence on institutional framework. So this would be a collaborative effort between the Jordan Lake Partnership, ultimately committees, if that's what's decided, and then all the elected bodies of government, um, which which would be likely be <coughs> part of these committees, but also would go back to the boards for decision making as we move forward, especially on the institutional framework and the schedule and the timing. Um, and identify how all of our supply needs can be met no matter what we end up doing. We always have to keep watching how we're going to meet the water demand no matter what we decide. We have to have an answer for how we're going to meet the demand. Okay. So that's what I have in a nutshell and I apologize for flying but um, most of this is repeat information for you. I'd be happy to take any questions or comments. Any questions from the board? I'd like to get a copy of the presentation. Sure. Okay. Um, also included in our packet was this document, um, which was talking about this topic. And it says that um, incrementally, the town will increase its existing water treatment plant capacity from 2 to 6 MG from the hall in the next 15 years. Estimated. Estimated. Yeah. <coughs> there, any required action on the town's part in order to secure an allocation from the hall up to 6 MG? We, we would have to get a permit to increase our plant size treatment. Yeah, that's the permit we would need. But, but nothing regarding quantity of water we can extract. No, we have that. Great. We have up to 8.91. Thank you. Sure. This is, uh, let's see here. It carries us to uh, our added new business number five. Uh, Yeah, we're usually going to 8 to 10, sometimes 8 to 11. Just use call to Jack, there's one there. There's three of us. One of the guys. I think we were 9 to 10. No, 8 to 10. Okay. Is Nancy still here? I was wondering where you were. You might just come up to the front. I don't know if I have a question for you, but I'd like to give you a bird's eye view of your discussion. Thank you. Nancy for her report. Uh, I think it's very thorough and it, uh, it paints a, the, the picture that I expected it to. Uh, we all know that uh, when the Townsend's uh, operation closed, it had a serious negative impact on the town and on Nancy's story. <coughs> that we that, uh, run into the red in terms of our uh, revenues and our enterprise fund back in uh, fiscal year 2012. That continued in 13 and 14, and it continues this year. I think the number this year is, it's not shown in your chart, but I think it's about 220,000. So we're now pushing, after four years, a million dollars in, in red ink in the enterprise fund. We did do a modest uh, rate increase uh, with the budget that we're now operating under. And as part of that, we agreed to discuss uh, 
again in uh, December whether or not a mid-year increase would be appropriate. Uh, in Nancy's memo, she talks about uh, paying a visit to UNC. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Bruce Beck may have gone with her there and working with the office uh, there that has the capability to help folks who are, are struggling with uh, how to set and maintain uh, water rates that keep a, a utility profitable. And I'm happy that they're doing that, but I don't think it's going to, uh, I think they can need to continue working on that. It'd be uh, very important uh, for our budget deliberations that we're going to do in uh, April, May, and June. But uh, tonight I want to at least give the board an opportunity to, if you're inclined to uh, stop the bleeding on the red ink, you know, we, we put $220,000 from the uh, general fund into the enterprise fund. And what I've given you here is uh, two opportunities or two options where you could uh, affect a mid-year rate increase. One of them is it would be a 9% across the board of just the usage uh, rates. Or the other one would be, a, and, and that 9% would get us to uh, a, a rate structure roughly that would uh, get us out of the red ink and slightly into the black ink. If you're not comfortable going all the way to uh, profitability uh, at this juncture, and you want to take a half step, I'm giving you that opportunity with a 4.5% increase. Uh, that means, uh, so, so let me kind of slow down a little bit. We've augmented the uh, Enterprise Fund with $220,000 this year. That means as we sit today, we've probably spent $110,000 of that. If we want to spend another $110,000 between now and the end of the fiscal year, we can leave the rates as they are. If we want to stop that red ink totally, we could do a 9% increase and not lose that $110,000 in the second half of the year. We wanted to sort of incrementally step up on it. We could do a four and a half, and instead of losing the whole hundred ten thousand, we would lose fifty-five thousand uh, again in, uh, in red ink in the enterprise fund between now and uh, the end of June. So, uh, what I prepared were two ordinances that, that would actually uh, amend the existing budget and change the water and sewer rates. Ordinance A is a 4.5% increase. Ordinance B is a 9% increase. And you can see on this sheet what that, uh, the general impact of that, you just pick, uh, use the 4.5 first. If uh, in-town rates existing for uh, the shortest, uh, the, the, the smaller users, are about, five, uh, let's just say, $5.60 per 1,000 gallons. Uh, a 4.5 increase would take that up about 20 cents to 480. If you were to be more aggressive, it would take it up, if you go to the 9% increase, it would take that 460 up about 40 cents per 1,000 to $5. And you can go across and see what the impact would be. Uh, you know, of course, out of town, that would be a, that impact would be a <coughs> for water. <coughs> And on the sewer, let's see here, sewer rates. The sewer rates are the ones on the uh, right side of the page, so. The increase there is also, let's see, from 6.90 to 7 20, so about 30 cents to a small user for a four and a half percent increase for about 60 cents per month for a nine percent increase. So again, I thought it was important that we at least have the discussion. Uh, you know, if the board has no appetite for an increase at this time, I certainly understand that. We can go and uh, discuss it further in our retreat. Uh, and we can let Nancy finish her, her work with the uh, folks at UNC to help us better understand rate setting and how we can get to be a uh, or no longer uh, not profitable. But I thought it was important to at least have the discussion tonight. So, if there are any questions about what I've prepared here, I'd be happy to answer them and open the board, open the, open the discussion to any other board members who'd like to come in. Well, Mr. Mayor, thank you for digging into this. Um, I certainly appreciate it. And 
have experienced the, the bleeding that you've referenced um, with the loss of Townsend's. I, I, I like your idea of letting Nancy make a presentation to us on the 12th after consulting with the school government. And, um, and it, it dovetails into what I was hoping to talk about at the last item for the budget uh, calendar, and that is, uh, we can talk about it again when we get there, but I'd like for us to change the date of our retreat from the 10th to the 17th. We have a meeting January 12th, and we'll receive this presentation and do other business that the town has. That's a Saturday, January 10th, so I, that, like, isn't it? The, the, it's tentative. The tentative, that we were, one iteration, we actually have that taken out of there. The tenth is a date that we just plugged in there. The tenth is not actually a date. Well, oh, no, so it is a date. <laughs> 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 you you can't not sure about that. So what I was going to, in my comments, what I was going to do is try to nail you guys down on some dates that you have some dates. And I was going to try to nail it down on the 17th. Because I'm thinking, if I want to do it in January, I think I'll yeah. call it. So we can work on that on Saturday. Well, um, I don't need to nail the date down, but um, I was just hoping to uh, not have our retreat prior to this presentation. <coughs> so that was my objective. Well, it would just mean, I think, that we have to uh, back the retreat a little bit later into January. Yeah. What, what, what's, yeah, what's, which Monday is the Martin Luther King holiday give us this three-day movement? It's the 19th. The 19th. So that's probably a folks are traveling here, but I think you might want to avoid that weekend. Uh, which if, is, I, if I could, yeah, just, I'm sorry, the <coughs> day that long is available on the 31st. And the third of January, if you want to do it in January, um, he has other dates available in February. Just to remind the board that I work on Saturdays, and I it's very difficult for me to take time off on Saturdays, so just to water that out. And, and I, I appreciate that. I I only chose Saturdays just from the standpoint we've done it on Saturdays in the past. Certainly, if you want us to entertain other dates. Let's see. One, two, three, four. This is a. Oh, that's a good 
Yeah, they didn't vote that this year. No. That's, that's, that's they got a new one off on this hatchet. So how do we do been a suggestion that we peg uh, February 2nd? How does everybody's calendar look for that day? Okay. Right. I think you're going to have yeah, Yes, I just wanted to weigh in on this water issue, if, if you would allow me for one second. Water issue? What you were just discussing. Oh, the rates. Oh, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Board will entertain it. Discussion from our former mayor. Come on to the podium, sir. As I follow it, it's the same discussion we've had many times, and Mr. T Mayor Terry has put together good information. I just wanted to ask the board that uh, to consider now that we've had a change in the county and that I presented information at their CIP plan and I was able to talk to Commissioner Hales on the way out, they fully expect that we might come forward with a letter again requesting cooperation and to look at the opportunity for the town and county to cooperate on water. That's all. This has been brought up probably three times in the past, including when Mayor Terry was the manager, but I think it might be a good opportunity to revisit it again. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I think that I think I hear a consensus that we prefer not to take any action on this tonight. We'll take some time to digest the material and give Nancy have an opportunity to do her work with UNC. Uh, you don't have to work with our consultant. Uh, I just want to continue to revisit the that's secret. And, uh, that's all. Either at the end of the yeah. I don't third quarter or perhaps the third quarter. I don't have to my life. Is that I don't have to break fair synopsis of where we are? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. So that took care of. Uh, we took care of old business number five and new business number two big scratch out off. <coughs> Last thing here shouldn't take a great deal of time. Uh, I got an inquiry from uh, Pat Richardson who is uh, with uh, the retirement community at Farrington and she asked that uh, since Mr. Foley has uh, rotated off of their board, uh, she wants to know if uh, we can provide uh, another representative from the town board to, to fill that seat. So if we, if we have any volunteers, uh, happy to hear about that tonight. And then you can, you can maybe talk to, speak to uh, the, the uh, time commitment that that would entail. Um, it was probably different this year than it was um, when I was on the board. We did create a website, which took quite a bit of time. Um, but I think now it's a monthly meeting. Um, there is going to be uh, an event. 
that this, whoever serves will be expected to be a play a big part in that agreement the post uh, potential retirees in Pittsburgh, and also um, to occasionally attend, attend trade shows, different parts of the country. So, if you want to go, I work on weekends, so that would be a problem for me in the future. They need people that can go. Some of them are lovely. It also involves um, when people respond to the uh, website, re um, requesting information, taking time to respond, and providing information about Pittsburgh. Okay. Is anybody interested in, in filling that, that void? A few volunteers? If not, uh, Mr. Grusbeck indicated he, he might be willing to help in that regard. And, and, and I, I think, uh, and, and I, uh, as one of the fully unemployed folks on the board here, I think I, uh, I'm willing to, to do that. Mr. Grusbeck will be my backup. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the board objects, I'll tell Ms. Richardson that I'll, I'll fill in behind. Uh, okay. But I'm, but I'm not going to any trade shows in San Francisco or anything like that. Yeah, he's used to travel. Okay, yeah. Probably going to Miami. Yeah. I think most okay. of the ones are in the southeast, but they're, they're different places. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll take a stab at that, and if it gets too onerous, I'll let you know. Okay.
that we had, uh, as you're aware, I, I tried to keep you updated on a water main break that we had on Chatham Forest Drive uh, on Thanksgiving Day of all dates. Uh, the crew was there all day, did an excellent job. Uh, Chief Crutchfield also uh, pitched in a little bit, but thankfully didn't get down into the trench, at least as far as I know. Um, so uh, we've, we've followed up since then with, with clean up and replaced the uh, uh, damage with the driveway and we've done our best to replace the driveway and, and we see uh, and so forth. Uh, so uh, I think uh, kudos to our, our utilities crew and, and working in a day that really wasn't very pleasant and was a holiday. Uh, the, um, also too, uh, we received uh, uh, a letter uh, regarding it, speaking of inclement weather. Uh, received uh, an email um, questioning or wondering about the, the town's policies and practices as far as snow removal is concerned. Um, I know that, that Mr. Terry provided uh, a, a response uh, to that and I think he was, he was accurate uh, and right on in that, in that with you know, a, a department, a utilities department in the southeast maybe as, as, as well equipped to deal with uh, a massive or a, a big snow event like you would see in, in certain areas uh, North, um, but but we do our best. In, in the time since then, I've talked to uh, Mr. Poti uh, a little bit more, and he does have a snow uh, removal policy that he's been um, that he's been working on and updated. And if, it, if, if unless you think it's absolutely not recommended or necessary, I, I could probably bring that to your attention at an upcoming meeting. Um, it just kind of goes through how we go about uh, the best how we go about actually attacking the snow. A snow event uh, in town, um, and probably get your reaction on that so you're fully aware and informed of, of how it is we go about it. Um, certainly, there, there are other things that we can do probably after that, whether we consider um, uh, purchasing new equipment, which isn't my first option at all, uh, or we engage in private contractors, which it sounds as if actually the, the Mr. Cookie has in that department as well, and so we may be looking um, for outside of private help on. Some of, those, uh, some of those streets. So um, we'll continue to work on that. It's a legitimate concern. Um, and you know, just because we're somewhat limited doesn't mean we can't at least try to improve on it. Uh, we've also had some, uh, as you're, you guys are aware, the leaves are, are now pretty much uh, almost all fall and the wind's blowing a lot of them down. Um, the, uh, we did have some, as, as discussed in the previous meeting, we did have some issues with equipment that, that appears to be uh, getting fixed, but in the meantime, or has been fixed, but in the meantime, we are playing a catch up game. And we had anticipated actually working over the weekend, but, but uh, on Saturday with the rain, um, Mr. Pote didn't feel like it was uh, it was going to be time well spent. So we're, we're planning on being out there all four days uh, this week, and if necessary, uh, five days really this week, and if necessary, uh, on, the, uh, on the weekend as well. So uh, if you do get Complaints or concerns, please let us know. Uh, but we are uh, working pretty hard to, uh, to address them. Um, and with that, uh, I guess I would, uh, I guess I would stop and take any questions or comments you have. Questions for the manager? I have one, one comment or question. Comment. I'm looking forward to the code assessment uh, that I think is in beginning of mid January. And just um, I have signed up for the email notifications and I have not received anything. And I'm just wondering is the system working? Yeah. 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 updates. I don't, I don't have anything uh, new to report on that. Anything from the RPO? Yeah. Some solid waste. Yeah. I'll
Okay. It's to Commissioner Concerns. Commissioner Farrell. Um, it's really not a concern. I just want to let everybody know. I know we had said something about the parade being on first Sunday. I think they had said something about it. But I, when I walked back, I stopped by a couple of the uh, vendors and spoke with them about them. And uh, the three to four ladies that I spoke to, they were real pleased with it being on the uh, day of the parade because they said they had one of their busiest days. So that was... Uh, they didn't have any problem with the parade or the you know, the extra people coming into town themselves. That's all I have. It's a portable atmosphere down there. Yeah. There's a lot of people around the Okay, anything else? No, sir. Mr. Foley. I just wanted to follow up on one of the things we talked about at the uh, mid-year retreat that we did and we talked about uh, part, part of Chatham Park's review of small area plans and that we were going to try to make progress on that so I was just wondering if we are making progress and um, is that, that being tended to? Yeah, I, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bass has, has collected some information on uh, other examples from other communities and, and is putting something together and we should have something to <coughs> the only thing that I have is, of course, this, I just wanted to mention this news release from Duke Energy concerning the coal ash, uh, and they're having a community in information event, one in Lee County, December 10th, and the other in Chatham County on December 11th. Okay. Commissioner Turner. We don't have anything this time. Okay. We got a couple of quick ones. Uh, one of them's a repeat. Uh, I wonder if, between the chief and the engineer, if we could uh, revisit the issue of the missing uh, stop sign uh, or stop sign that was never installed at the end of Millbrook and the, the corner of Millbrook and Freeman. If you go down to Freeman, if you go down Millbrook Drive in, in uh, Powell Place, every cross street has stop signs that go both ways that go on to Millbrook. But uh, the north end of Freeman Drive was just built out in the last year, and for whatever, when it was just trees, nobody bothered to put a stop sign as you're coming south on Freeman and you intersect Millbrook. Uh, if you're going on Millbrook, you don't have to stop if you're coming south on uh, Freeman, you don't have to stop, and that's, that's not safe. So I don't know whether it's Fred needs to bring the attention of uh, Bryson Powell or, or somebody does. And they need to get that stop sign put there before something untoward happens. And I'll just share with the board and, and uh, Commissioner Foley can uh, uh, verify this that there's no, uh, we both are on the uh, Powell Place, uh, what do we call it, listserv, message board, whatever, where the uh, citizens uh, live out there get to exchange uh, comments and questions. And, and uh, it's been a real hot topic lately again is traffic on Mill uh, traffic and parking on Millbrook. Uh, 
and I don't have any recommendations or anything tonight. Just, uh, just a uh, alert to the board that you may be hearing from the uh, the uh, the Powell Place HOA. Uh, I don't know that there's consensus uh, right or anything from legal law like it is uh, to uh, yeah to uh, you know kill parking on both sides of the street, uh, wide the street. And there's as many opinions as there are people who post to the website, but it's. Uh, there's quite a few people who think it's a safety hazard, and if you go out there and spend any time, you'll see that uh, it really has become, in essence, a, it's like the old country bridges that are one lane. You know, you just it's a common courtesy everybody has learned that when you're when you're going in, you kind of have the right of way. But when you're going out, you, somebody's coming, you need to pull over and stop. You know, to pass through. So. Uh, yeah, there are, there are at least two curves there. Yeah, there's two curves where the sight distance is really bad, and so don't be surprised if uh, the Powell Place HOA uh, brings that to the board here in the near future. And just on a personal note, I'm going to be traveling out of town from Wednesday to Friday this week, and. Uh, Wish happy holidays to everybody. We travel out of town for the holidays as well. Uh, going to be uh, taking my entire family to Kurt Turks and Caicos for Christmas from the 22nd to the 28th. My, my uh, spouse recently retired and uh, saved her last six or eight paychecks to uh, treat the family to a holiday in the Caribbean. So don't be looking for me in Powell Place to, uh, from the 22nd to the 28th. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, well, I Merry have Christmas. And one other comment. I'm, and, and Commissioner Baldwin reminded me of it. I plan to attend the Chatham County version of the uh, Duke Energy uh, meeting, and I inquired of Commissioner Turner whether or not she was going to attend. However, she's unavailable because she is receiving the Goodwin Award that evening. <laughs> so, well, congratulations. congratulations. Yes, I'm, I'm, I thought it was just one more time, and I'll be very brief. I was, I was thinking you guys might say something about it. But I, on behalf of staff, or on behalf of my place on staff, I'd like to extend a wholehearted thanks to our staff for organizing the parade. Um, it was uh, Paul Horn especially for delivering the weather, um, which I think made it all possible. I, everyone on staff, I think everyone who pulls a paycheck from the town of Pittsburgh, I think played a little bit of a part in that parade. Uh, and I think it, it came off really well. We are already talking this morning about things to improve it for uh, next year. Um, thanks to uh, Chief Crushfield for bringing in help from the county. And so I think it's not only a Pittsburgh event, but what, what's been happening is it seems to be more of a somewhat of a regional event uh, as well. Um, I've got to be just to say that it might be the most popular uh, Christmas parade in, in Chatham County. So anyway, thanks very much to staff for that and, and your involvement. Thank you for letting us use the golf cart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well said, Mr. Manager, and I think we all agree it was a great, great event. And uh, the only downside, the only downside that I recall was that Santa Claus put at least three of us on the naughty list <laughs> when he went by. And, uh, <laughs> Leave those camera phones in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I heard. Okay. Okay. There being further business, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned.